And we're not going to read the whole chapter. We will just read some of the uh, few verses here. Genesis chapter 16 verse number 1 up to 5 lang po. But we're going to study the whole chapter. Are you there, man? Amen. Let us read this in unison. Genesis chapter 16 verse number 1 to 5. Please be in po. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath retained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my handmaid. May be retained by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Agar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee, I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she was, I was despised in her eyes, the Lord just between me and thee. Shall we pray? Our loving Lord, thank you once again for this uh, opportunity. I pray that you will uh, help us and give us, Lord, get the understanding and knowledge, Lord, in listening and studying your word this afternoon. I also pray, Father, that you will help me as I stand behind the pulpit. May you be the one, Lord, to be seen in me, not myself. Lord, just bless the message. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. <laughs> So everybody is familiar with Abram, amen? amen? So let's go first in chapter 12. They're going to start here in chapter 12. The call of Abram. So God called Abram to leave the Chaldees of Ur. Now during the time, uh, Chaldees of Ur is uh, one of the uh, prosperous city, ancient city during the time. It was a center of business and commerce. And God told Abraham to leave that place and go to the land that God wants him to be. And that is the promised land. And God uh, promised him here in verse number 2, And I will make of thee, chapter 12, verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. We have to understand that the God has always given us the promise. And that when God will give us a promise, God will always fulfill all of these things. Amen? Amen. And praise the Lord for that. And as we go on to, the, to these verses here, we can all see here that uh, Abram removed from his place and uh, followed the uh, will and the call of God to him. He took Sarah's wife and even Abram, uh, nep Abram's nephew, who is Lot. And as we can see later on, that uh, Lot also became trouble in the life of Abram. So if we can see here in uh, verse 8, And he removed from thence into a mountain unto the east Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east, and there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Now it is very important uh, uh, for Abraham during the time to build an ark. It is because it is the means of worship and his fellowship and communion with the Lord God during those times. Now it, the same thing with us today. It is very important that we have a place of worship. We have a place where we can uh, uh, pour ourselves into the Lord and we can ask His help from time to time. Because we know that we could no longer help our own self without the help and the guidance of God. Amen? Now, we can also see here in verse 11, and it came to pass, uh, verse 10, and there was a famine in the land. Now, here comes now the testing. Uh, that was a good message yesterday, as what pastor said. 
It was a bit connected in our lesson today. Now, after those things that he received from the Lord, there was now another test. Now, he comes now the famine. But what happened here is that Abram decided to what? To move down to Egypt. Now, this is most of us, uh, uh, most of the time, many Christians failed. Amen. Instead of trusting God to provide all of your needs, we tend to make our own decisions without thinking and asking a proper counsel here in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, what happened here is that, uh, again, I think there's nothing wrong on the side of Abram because he was not thinking only of himself, but he was thinking also of his uh, family. They don't have anything to eat in Canaan during the time because there was a famine. But hey, take note that what the Bible is telling us that God will always supply all of our needs. Amen? So to make the long story short, they went to Egypt. And then the, there was another uh, uh, problem that uh, took here that uh, Abram said, before we are going to enter into the uh, Egyptians' custom, we have to. Uh, um, he made a deal with Sarah, his wife. And he said, uh, Sarah, when the people, uh, when the Egyptian will ask you about our relationship, you have to tell them that we're just, uh, that you are my sister. Actually, that is the half truth. Amen? Because if you're going to read, if I'm not mistaken, in. Uh, uh, the prior verses here that uh, Abra, uh, Sarah was a half sister of Abram. But again, half truth means a lie. Automatic, it's a lie. So, when I was reading, according to uh, Jewish custom, uh, they put, uh, while entering into the uh, custom, Egyptian custom, uh, she put, this is only according to Jewish custom. We don't have any proof here from the word of God. But they said that uh, Sarah was placed inside a coffin. This was according to the uh, Jewish custom. And then when the, uh, those customs uh, tried to check the coffin, when they opened it, they saw a beautiful woman who is Sarah. Now we can see here that... When we do something for the Lord without thinking it properly, we will always fail. But again, the hand of God was still there with Abram, even though he went to Egypt. Amen? And to make the long story short, the, uh, the Pharaoh took uh, Sarah, but God gave plague to the house of Pharaoh. Amen? Amen? Because we can see here that God doesn't want that the womb of Sarah would be defiled by a Gentile nation. Because through that, the Messiah will come up. Now, we can see here that Pharaoh, because of that, he gave what? Boots. I mean, uh, gifts to Abram together with the uh, different kinds of animals. Men servants, maid servants, and one of those was Hagar, was taken. As we can continue to read on. Now here in chapter thirteen, now we can also here see that Abram returned to Canaan, the promised land. Amen. Now it is a good thing for us Christians to return into the right track, into the right course, when we know that God is always with us. Amen. Amen. Always take note. Always put this in mind. That we cannot be successful when we are out from the presence of God. Now, the good thing here is that when Abram returned to Canaan, he didn't just stay on the corner and try to uh, cry because of his mistakes that he did in the land of Egypt. Instead, he built an altar and asked again the guidance of God. And that must be the attitude of each every one of us. Amen. Past is past. We have to think about that. And the important thing right now is for us to face the reality, the future that God wants us to be or to have in our lives. Now, Abram, what happened here? 
He built an altar. And Abram was very, very rich when it comes to cattle and everything. Because God was with him. Now in verse 13, we can see here that there was a strife here between the herdmen of Lot and the herdmen of Abram. We know the story, right? But of course, Abram was a spiritual man. He was thinking a proper way in order not to have confusion or to have that what he called argument or disagreement against Lot, his nephew. So what he did is to talk to Lot and said, to make the Lord so sure, okay, Lot, if you're going to choose on the left side, I will choose on the right. Amen. That is a good part in the life of Abram. Because he, he knew that those Canaanites who are living there are also watching them. Amen. The Canaanites may say, oh, they said they have a different God. They said that the, the God can lead them. And then look at them. They're fighting towards each other. And Abram, is avoid, and Abram was avoiding that to happen. And the same thing in the church. We know that we are wor uh, worshiping the same and living God. We have to understand towards another. We must avoid this, what we call disagreements. Although we cannot really avoid, but we must try to avoid. And try to understand one another. But of course, Lot... It's a carnal man. Look at the plains of Jordan. Oh, a vast land is a good place for me to stay. So you what? He chose that land over there. And Abraham chose the other way, the other way around. We have to understand that not all the good things that we can see in our eyes are always good. This is our mistake most of the time. Amen. Last of the eyes. <laughs> this one is good for me. But later on, what would happen? Oh, it is our own destruction. To make the long story short, I am making it long. <laughs> what is happening? I'm sorry. But I'm, not just, I'm sorry. So, Lot <laughs> fetch his tent towards Sodom, and then later on, we can observe. That he moved within Sodom itself. And in chapter 14, you can see here, let's go to chapter 14. Now, Chedolomer, together with the four kings, made a battle against the four kings who were under them, under tri tributaries, because these four kings uh, rebelled against them. So, what happened here, when they attacked Sodom and Gomorrah, they took everything, including Lot. Amen. We have to understand, brothers and sisters, in the Lord, if you, uh, Lot knew that this uh, Sodom, uh, this uh, country, is a wicked nation, what happened? He chose to live in, those, uh, in that area, in that place. Making right decisions is very important from time to time, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Especially if it is major. So when Abram heard that Lot, his nephew, was captured, Abram then gathered his 318 uh, 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 soldiers, armed men, and attacked the five kings together with their soldiers. And take note, they attacked by night. And this was a gr very uh, great uh, technique or uh, uh, I don't know how to say uh, military term, tactic. When they went to battle, to, and then what happened here? They prevailed and they were able to uh, defeat those five kings. Imagine. Amen. 
Abram was not only a rich man, but he was also a prudent man. He knows that from time to time, there must be soldiers or military that will protect and uh, give security on them while they were traveling when they're having their journey. Then what happened here? Abram met Melchizedek. The Bible was not, uh, uh, did not give us a, about more information about Melchizedek, but Melchizedek was the king of Salem. Salem is the old name of Jerusalem. And he was the priest and the king and the priest at the same time of the Most High God. And Melchizedek blessed Abram. And Abram gave what? His tithe. But he gave only his asset, not his possession. Then what happened here? Because uh, the king of Sodom was so glad that Abram defeated the, uh, uh, the enemies, the Dolomers' uh, uh, armies. He wanted to what? Offer a boot to him. But Abram did not accept him. Because Abraham said, maybe if you will uh, give something to me, uh, you, may, you will say that uh, you made me rich because of that. Because Abraham, what? His only focus is what? To give glory to God, not on himself. It is very important for us to give glory to God, not on our own selves. And most of the time, this is very dangerous. Because after having those victories, after having those things that we, uh, we had in life, we tend to what? Exalt ourselves instead of exalting God in our lives. It's so hard. Now, let's proceed. Chapter 15. God here. After these things, in verse 1, chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying... Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now what happened here is that God again assured Abraham that he, what, he will be the shield of Abram. Wait, what happened here? After his victory against those five kings, he is now uh, scared that those five kings might attack him anytime. Amen. Did, did you get the point, brothers and sisters in the Lord? And the same thing that we might think most of the time that we are not secure of what we are doing to God. But if we will just lay it out to God and trust Him that He can do something for us, then everything will be fine. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward now we can see also here that in verse 4 and behold the word of the Lord came unto him saying this shall not be thine ear because he said Lord you've given me the riches you've given me everything but I want a son to uh, uh, to be ear of those riches, the possessions that we had, that I had, Lord. But again, it takes another 13 more years before the promised son will be given to him. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, only God, God only wants us to believe and trust Him in His plans in us. Amen. Never sway around and try to do anything that you want without the counsel and the word of God. From the word of God. Now here, we can also see that God assured him that Abram, Eliezer, will not be the ear. But the ear would be, what well, will, will come from the bowels. And praise the Lord for that. 
Sometimes his promises really will take a long time. And all we have to do is just to wait. And what happened here is that God made a covenant with Abram. Now during the time when they made a covenant, they need to cut the animal into uh, halves. And then what they're doing is that both parties were going to pass through that dead animal while saying the oath of their covenant towards each other. Now what happened here is that when Abram made uh, cut the, those uh, animals into halves, he was waiting that God will come down. Amen? And appear to him. Remember that in chapter 12, God appeared to him personally. He was waiting. But what happened here is that Abram fell asleep. But again, when God will say something, he will do it. God appeared into what? Into a what? Furnace smoke in a, if I'm not mistaken, was that here? Please help me. In verse 17, it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace represents the what? What the Lord had given to the Israelites when they were walking in the wilderness, a pillar of cloud, Amen. And another thing here, behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. God appeared to Abram, showing and fulfilling, assuring him that the covenant is real and true. Hey. Are we taking time of asking our covenant with God? Are we having these things in life? But hey, take note. We have already Christ in us. And we have the Holy Spirit. And in verse 16, here we go. It is very important for us to know that in every journey of life, we will always encounter different what we call testings or different what we call difficulties along the way. Now, let's study warnings in our journey. There are different warnings, amen? Even when we are driving, there are different signs and warnings for us to be uh, what you call alerted or what you call uh, have that aspect of understanding what where we are passing through while we are driving. Now, number one, we're not going to take long this. Let us proceed to chapter 16. Here we go. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bear him no children. Imagine they were staying uh, in Canaan. Uh, before, they said, uh, the reason why we, God did not give us a son because we did not go, go to the uh, promised land or what God asked to, uh, to, to leave. But now they were already in Canaan for around 10 years. What happened? And most of the time, the tendency, we felt what? Discourage. We have some of those, what they call doubts. Now Abram now is about what? 86 years old. And, and after these things, I'm sorry. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an, she had an handmaid, an Egyptian. That's what I've said to you a while ago. This is one of the gifts that was given, uh, that was given by Pharaoh when Abram and Sarah went to Egypt. Now, whose name was Hagar? Number one. Never abandon God's way. Take note on that, but in Jesus in the Lord. He had been walking with the Lord for 10 years and learned some valuable lessons. And I believe each every one of us learned valuable, valuable lessons in life. Amen. And I hope that those lessons will uh, 
help us through our journeys of life. Amen? Because we know that we have a great God waiting for us ahead. Praise the Lord for that. Never deep apart or what they call never abandon God's way. Amen? God had promised Abram and Sarah a child but not told them what? About the date, about the year, about the month the child would be born. No. I believe this was a period of waiting. Amen. Sabi siguro nila, family planning tayo. Ano ba talagang dapat gawin? Siguro pa pwedeng lapitan natin si Dr. Ano? Dr. Doctor or si Dr. Kwakwak. We don't know. A period of waiting and most people don't like to wait. Hebrews 6.12. Brother John, could you please? Hebrews 6.12. It says here, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit what he call the promises. Remember that God has a perfect timetable for each every one of us. And we have to wait for the time. All he wants us to do is to wait. After all, this event was not a birth of just another baby, but a birth of what he called God's great plan of salvation for the whole world. However, Sarah waited for something to happen and she became impatient. And then she said, Abram, I don't know if uh, who among the two of us is a problem? You or me? Abram, I have a, ha- I have a handmaid. You go into her, inseminate with her, and then when she will uh, conceive and bear a child, okay, that would be the ear. She was so impatient. And most of the time, we are like that, very impatient. Remember, never abandon God's way. Never. He wanted Abram and Sarah to be physically as good as dead because God wants both of them to believe and trust His great plan for the two of them. Great plan. Plan, hey, great. May tatas ba sa great? Greater, greatest. Amen. Meron nga. Thank you, Pastor. Yon nagising, nagising ng mga la. Here we go. So what happened here is that because of their uh, being impatient, what happened? To make the long story short, again. Nakailan na ba, Brother Jong? Natatawa na si Jong eh. Sainsya na po, ginanahan na po ako. So what happened here Hagar conceived. She conceived. But what happened here? After conceiving, Hagar thought, huh, See, mas babay ako sa iyo. So what happened? Of course, Sarah got jealous. We have to understand here that there must be willingness to wait on the Lord. Amen. This is another evidence that you are walking by faith and not by sight. We have to understand that. Another evidence of faith that we have to understand and put in our mind is that you are acting of the authority of God's word. The Bible tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 
17. You act by faith and to know that God will bless if you are obeying and following His way. Not your own way. So never abandon God's way. So whenever you act by faith, God will give you what? Joy and peace in the heart. Amen. Because He knows that you are following His way. But if you will abandon His way, you will feel that what they call what? Discomfort and discouragement and doubt within your heart. Never abandon God's way. Point number two. Never implement your own way. Not your own way. Amen. Now let's continue. Verse 3. Uh, verse 2. And Zarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my handmaid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. This is also the problem. Remember that Abram was the head of the family. He must be the one to uh, rebuke Sarah. Amen. Amen. Sarah, God has a promise. And we have to wait. And I believe during this time, Abram was carnal. Amen. You know, carnality can, cannot really help us. When it comes to decision making. Now, in verse 3, And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised. In her eyes. Never implement your own way. Because your way. Might be good. On your own mind. On your thoughts. It might be good. In your eyes. But it is not right. In the eyes of God. Amen. Never. Implement your own way. Sarah knew that she was incapable of bearing. A child, but that her husband was still capable of begetting a child. Now, God has specifically named Abraham as the father of the promised heir, but he had not yet identified the mother. There was a confusion during those days. Sino ba talaga? But again, we don't have the right to doubt God. No way. We have to understand here. Logically, it would be Abram's wife, Sarah, not Hagar. Hey, through faith is based on the word of God and not on the wisdom of man. Proverbs chapter 3 verse number 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct thy paths. Because faith is living without scheming. But of course, Sarah thought maybe this is the best way. Maybe there's a proper way. Maybe, and most of the time we fell on that maybe, maybe, maybe. It must be what? Sure. So when we do something, it must be sure. It must be, thus said the Lord according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Know of a surety in, let us read here in Genesis 15 and 13, please. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, 
and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for hundred years. After hearing this, maybe Abraham said, oh, maybe there's no need for me to have a son if this will happen. But again, because of his willingness as well to have a son, what happened? But again, remember, this is the plan of God. Sarah was not concerned about the glory of God. Her only goal was that, what? That I may obtain a child by her. Take note. Because of our selfishness sometimes. Making our own decisions because of our selfishness. Hey! You don't have to blame other people or what the, are those things that are happening in your life. It could be worse. It could be bad. It could be joy. Don't blame any other people. But you have to blame yourself because of your selfishness. Hey! Perhaps there is a hint of disappointment in the part of Sarah. But again, during those days, 80 years old, parang ano lang yun eh. Parang sa atin na panahon po, parang 30s lang. Noong time na yan. Kasi, di ganun nung unang panahon. Now, as we continue here, there was disappointment and even blaming God when she says, The Lord hath restrained me from bearing. As what I've said, you don't have any right to blame God. Because God has a purpose while this, why these things are happening in your life. It was often being said that again, you are familiar with this, God's delays are not what? God's denials. Amen. You have to wait. Magkakaanak ka rin, Brother June. Brother Moon. Lalo na kami ni Sister Lily. Nainggit ako eh. Amen. <laughs> We've been praying for that. We've been praying for a girl. Amen. Please help us to pray. <laughs> so Abram's taking Hagar as a second wife was perfectly legal during those days. But again, in the eyes of God, it wasn't right. But not everything that is legal or that appears to be successful is approved by the will of God. God never accepted Hagar as Abram's wife. Look at here. In chapter 21, verse 10, not Abram's wife and son. Again, I'm sorry. In chapter 16, verse 8, the angel of the Lord called her what? Sarah's what? Maid. Not Abram's what? Wife. Because whatsoever is not of faith, according to the word of God, in Romans chapter 14, verse 23, is what? Sin. It is sin. God rejected the whole enterprise because he had something far better in the mind for Abram and Sarah. So never implement your own way. Amen. Amen. Third point here. Verse number five to six. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai, Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Umalis siya sa kanyang mukha. Never argue on God's way. 
When you follow the wisdom of the world, you will end up worrying like the world. In James chapter 3, verse number 13 to 18. We have to understand that all disagreements, family uh, disagreements are the most painful and the most difficult to settle. Take note on that. In the family. But let's take a look back in chapter 12. What if Abram did not go to Egypt? Do you think this situation that they're facing right now will happen? Hello? It is because of our bad choice. Amen? Diyan tayo magaling minsan eh. Remember that in the Bible, when God will uh, talk to us, in the Bible, God will tell it, it will appear in, what, in a dream or in a vision. And right now in the present, those pictures that are standing behind the pulpit and the will of the Lord is being revealed in His Word. But our problem is that we don't want to follow. That's why I, I like the, the post that uh, it says here, the definition of stupid. What's that? Knowing the truth. Can you please help me? But still believing in what? Lies. And that's true. And that's the reality. Everything has been laid to us by God, but we still tend to follow our own way. Jan tayo magaling. The first thing they should have done was what? When this disagreement happened, they must what? Build an altar and ask the guidance of God. That must be the first thing that they have done. Worship the Lord and tell Him their problems. They should have confessed their sins and receive His gracious forgiveness. But hey, they made their own way. Now once you stop fighting with God and with yourself, you will have an easier time not fighting with others as well. Amen? The first step toward the consolation with others is to what? Getting right with God. You cannot be in good fellowship with other people if you are not right with God. Because most of the time, we are left with God instead of right. So what happened here? Sarah's solution was to blame her husband. <laughs> See? Blaming her husband. And here in chapter 16, in verse 1, we can see here, here that he asked Abram to take Hagar. Wow. Blaming each other and mistreat her servant as she gave vent to her anger. She seems to have forgotten that she, she was the one who had made the marriage suggestion for the first time. He was the one. What happened to Abram's solution? What happened? Abram said, okay, it's up to you. But the good thing here for Abram, she listened to his wife. Amen? Yes, remember in the family, husband must be the head. But we have also to understand here in the word of God that the Bible tells us that we have to what? Submitting oneself unto another. Amen. Husband also must submit to his wife and the wife must also submit to his husband. Both. Amen. <laughs> Wala nag-amen. 
Talagang iba rin sila. <laughs> Another th thing here, Hagar's solution was what? After having this problem, he ran away from the problem. A tactic we all learn from Adam and Eve. Run from the problem. However, you soon discover that you cannot solve problems by running away. Abram learned that when he fled to what? Egypt. Huwag naman sana, mga kapatid, na dumating sa ating buhay na nawala natin sa church na ito. Huwag naman sana, nasiraan pa natin ng iglesia na itinatag ng Panginoon. Amen? Para sabihin mong toxic ang lugar na ito. No! Nakinabang ka rin. Ginamit ka ng Panginoon and you must be thankful for that. Live and be quiet. And serve the Lord where God leads you. Amen? Some of you might be mad at me right now. It's up to you. It's up to me also. My brother Gob, sino yan? Mani Pukyao. And lastly, again, verse number 17 to 16. We're not going to read it long. Chapter, seven, uh, chapter 16, verse number 7 to 16. Never oppose on God's way. Never oppose. You can see that in James chapter 4, verse number 1 to 10. We're not going to read that, that anymore. But why Christians fight and how Christians can be at peace. Remember that our, bat, the bat, our battles among ourselves are caused because we obey our three enemies. Number one, in James 4, 4, the world. Second, the flesh. And third, the devil. Remember these three things. Now, how can we expect to be at peace with God, with each other, if we are living for the enemy? Now, you can see here in James 4, 6 and 7, please. James 4, 6 and 7. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the what? Humble. Amen. Humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he what? He will flee from you. And that is a very good reminder for all of us. Never oppose on God's plan. Thanks be to God. Hagar, when she fled... Again, Sarah, because of disagreement, she was about to go back to Egypt and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Her, I mean. The angel of the Lord said, return to Sarah and submit unto her. Amen? Submission is very important submission and then the angel of the Lord said you will conceive and bear a child and you will call his name Ishmael and I will also multiply his seed and he will be also a great uh, man but he will become wild his hand will be against those People and those people will be against his hand. That's the promise. That's why, even until right now, those if you will go to the Middle East, they were also blessed financially. <laughs> Amen. Because they're also descendants of Abraham. Another thing here, Sarah submitted to God as well. Praise the Lord. After hearing the testimony of uh, Hagar. Her handmaid, she accepted her once again. You know, giving us chances is a good thing. Because our God 
gave us many chances as well. We felt many, many times. I felt many, many times, and even you as well. But we have to keep on focusing and look forward ahead, knowing that there's always victory that lies ahead. Another thing here, Abraham submitted to God. Praise the Lord. Because Abraham, after having these difficulties in his journey, he still continued, he continued to serve the Lord faithfully. Amen. Our journey is right now might not be easy. There's no easy way. Sabi ni James Ingram. Ah. But hey, everything will be easy if you will allow God to work in your life. Along the way, as what our pastor told us a while ago, there would be, uh, it would be bumpy. There might be snares along the way. But God is always gracious to us. Telling us to walk what circumspectly along the way. And be patient while waiting for the right time. Because God has a best plan for us. Hey, let's go on in our journey. And let's keep on serving the Lord faithfully for the rest of our life. Pastor.